Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. Hi, everybody. We're going to talk about Gotham today. Uh, season two, episode seven, <laughs> Mommy's Little Monster. Um, today, I have some different people with me, and also Dom's not here, so I get to host. But with me on this lovely evening is uh, Nikki. Hi. Hi. And uh, my forever below guy, Mike. Hi. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good. What did you guys think of the episode? Like, a lot happened. <laughs> yeah, a lot happened. It was all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like this, like, lately, we've been kind of saying it's been pretty, they've been pretty focused. Yeah. On, like, one or two plot lines, maybe three. This was just, like, all over. sensory overload. But, like, a lot of important stuff happened, and it was really, really interesting. So, I guess we'll start, I guess we'll start right at the beginning, then, where um, Penguin found his mummy. Mummy. And also found Theo and Tigress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so he finally got to hold his mother in his arms again, and she. As soon as that happened, she was killed. And you know what's funny? I said it like I was like, I'm not going to care when she dies, and I, I you actually cared. did. You, you cared. cared. I, I actually kind of did. I so kind of got very saddened. It was just like you know. Um, Penguin has been like they were dehumanizing him from after the first season. Like as soon as he took over, he was like, ah, you know, he just seemed like an arrogant little pissant. And then when his mom let got taken away, it's just like he became normal again. He came became snipey like he was before, and I kind of felt sympathy for him. Yeah, I kind of felt really bad for him. It's like loving reunite, loving reunion with mother and then mother dies in arms it's just no yeah it, it was it, you know i and i and i did say this and i still feel this way that i'm glad like I'm, i wanted it to happen to make him crazy er yeah. you know <laughs> he was he was going nuts just that she was missing but like oh, yeah. he he needed the push to make him the penguin that we know from like the batman universe to be like a complete you know have complete disregard for humanity really Mm -hmm. And this, I think, is what will do it. And he doesn't even care about his own life right now, as we saw later on. Not no. so much. And I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm very curious to see where he goes with this now. Because, you know, last we saw he got shot. But we'll, we'll get to that later, mm -hmm. <laughs> I suppose. He's, but um, he, Yeah, he got shot. He'll live. Uh, something interesting happened with Butch. In that little scene there. Yeah. Apparently, he's not programmed anymore. He's fixed. It's kind of like um, when you see those, you know, shifty hypnotists and they say, oh, well, I'm going to hypnotize you. And then they say, oh, this word will, you know, make them do this chicken clucky thing. So be sure you don't say that word too often because then they'll just randomly chicken cluck in the middle of the grocery store or something. It's kind of like a hypnotism, sort of. Conditioning. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, I think it went like really deep though, like like a very deep hypnotism to the point where like he, you know, it was just an ingrained thought pattern, like yeah. which is, you know, obviously impossible, but you know, for this for our purposes, it was very interesting that 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 Tigress was able to reverse this so quickly, like it only yeah, like it took her like what like a night. <laughs> it seemed like only a night, yeah. Probably less than that. She said it took a couple tries, but she got it. A few tries, yeah. yeah. So she must know how to do it herself, and obviously that leads the skill of how to undo it. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I would. I can only imagine because you know she knew exactly how to how to stop it. Apparently, she, there was no trial and error. She just did it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I would like to know more about the depth of her abilities. <laughs> Me too. Me As too. A freaky just whip lady. Freaky whip lady. I like that. That's. Okay. Well, I mean, obviously she's not related to Theo. But no. he calls her his sister. 
I, you see, I don't get their relationship. Mm. Neither do I. It, it looks very intimate at the same time as not so much. Right. Like, were they having a three-way with Barbara? <laughs> Do I, like, I feel like I shouldn't have to ask that question, but it just, I don't know, man. I don't know what the hell's going on there. And the way she was, like, kind of hanging on him this episode, and, and, like, that's, that's not how you, like, approach your brother, let's just say. I've yeah. seen, a, yeah, I've seen enough shows lately where there's been really creepy moments between brothers and sisters. Really? This has been yeah. happening. This has been happening a on a thing. couple of shows. I mean, yeah. first, you know, notably, everybody knows Game of Thrones. That's oh, that's well. set, the, that's set the gold standard hey. for creepy. And now on Originals, it's happening. And I thought there was something else, so... Ugh. I'm disturbed by this trend. Yeah, me too. I do not yeah. like it. Um, But anyway, I guess we can move on to the other super interesting part of this episode. Mr. Edward Nigma. Now... <sighs> Allow me to state how much I love this because I'm watching the episode and I got subtitles on and all of a sudden it just says Dark Nigma and I'm like, really? <laughs> really? It's his name is Dark Nigma? Why not? I drew my oh, I drew man. comparisons to Jim Carrey for two reasons. One, Jim Carrey played the Riddler. Two, Jim Carrey played a guy with multiple personality disorder. Now I was thinking, Dark Nigma, why not just give it a name like Hank? <laughs> Yeah, number 23, that shit. Exactly. <laughs> I, don't I know. knew what movie he was talking about, everybody. Me, myself, and Irene. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> that was it. Oh, but, God. Yeah, so his dark side returned. Um, yeah. I guess that makes sense because, you know, his dark side showed up when he didn't have Kristen in his life. And then he went away because I guess, you know, all was well until he strangled her. And then things were not so well, and Which, apparently, great job. yeah, I mean, he did so good. He just, I was like, oh, you perfectly blocked her airways. Good, good. But then Dark Side takes over, and you know, stashes the body in the medical examiner's office, and leaves him with a riddle. Yeah. To himself. To himself. Which is an interesting play on things it really is yeah i i was kind of like i was like wait did he like really leave a riddle for himself and then i started to see like oh okay this this personality wants to take over okay mm -hmm. all right i'm into it now and i like the way they're doing that because i mean the riddler has always been you know this is obviously your early years riddler but he was always Leaving riddles for everybody, and I haven't seen a single riddle yet till today. <sighs> really, only that one that he in yeah. the letter he left for Kristen. Yeah, season one. But I mean, mm. that really wasn't that much of a riddle, more than just no. a note. Just it was cryptic, but yeah, you know, not a riddle. Mm. But this really, like this was Riddler level riddle, and I was it really was. really happy with that. Oh, it was I was super so cool. excited! As soon as I saw that card, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, oh shit. So <laughs> <clears throat> it was actually pretty intricate. Um, I feel like I feel like he definitely could have solved it faster if he wasn't panicking so much. But obviously, he was yeah. definitely like, because I was like, dude, like you don't you don't know. <laughs> I, I think I figured it out before he did. I'm like, dude, so, really? Relax. Well, because he was like looking at the vending machine. I'm like, ah. Oh. Well, yeah, as soon as he looked at the vending machine, that made sense to me, too. Yeah. But then I was like, oh, man, is it... I, I don't know a body part, obviously, but hey, you know. It made, it made sense when it happened. I mean, yeah. I, do, I do have to state, what I've never seen a vending machine that serves lady fingers. I feel like it's an uncommon thing. I f the only... I, yeah. I've never had lady fingers outside of tiramisu. I don't even know where to get lady fingers, except off of the hands of ladies. Which, hmm. lovely play, by the way. Yeah. Really, I mean, just... It's like, the, the, there's the hand. And there's my other question. Why was he worried? How many people are actually buying ladyfingers out of this vending machine that right? they're going to come across a hand? Yeah, and how much money did he have to spend to get it in there? and Or to get it out of there? I want to know that, too. <laughs> That's the better thing. He spent all that money getting it out of there. Well, obviously, his alternate self got it in there without having to spend any money. Right. Like, I was like... <laughs> that was you. Okay, now... 
I'm sorry. I know it was an alternate personality, but that was still you. You put it in there. I think you could get it out of there. Could get it out. But I mean, again, he was panicking. He was panicking, and there were still people walking around in the GCPD. So, I mean, the easiest way to look non-conspicuous is to get the things out of the vending machine the way everybody else does yeah. instead of opening the back and be like, oh, there's a hand. It's a great way oh. to avoid suspicion. I'm just going to buy every package of ladyfingers in here. That's not going to look weird. Maybe he wanted to make a cake. Yeah, he wanted hey, to make the hey. most epic tiramisu, like 80 <laughs> of them. Oh, my God. To imagine. But, like, Actually, I can. My, my other thing was, like, you know, obviously there's people in the GCPD 24-7. You know, that's, mm-hmm. a good, that's a given. Sure, the night crew is probably a skeleton. But, Especially you know, now. he was, you know, Dark Nigma was wearing his badge when he went in. So it's like, it, it must have been really tricky, I would imagine, for even, like, even for his evil self to kind of sneak in there and get all that done without raising any kind of suspicion. But apparently he's much craftier than our dorky glasses wearing Nigma. So. Nigma has it in him. I mean, Obviously. I don't mean Dark Nigma for sure. I mean, I mean Nigma Nigma. He, he could figure it out. He's just he was way too frazzled. Absolutely, yeah. Because you know he still he still has his intelligence. It's him. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, <laughs> God, I do. <laughs> I have to say that scene in the Emmys, like in the actual office, when when Leslie walked in, was just like <sighs> such cringe. Oh, I know. Like, woman. How dense are you? Like, could you just, could you just, like, look, like, just yeah. insist a little harder that you look at the corpse behind him? <laughs> like, the sweat is like, pouring off of him. The sweat's pouring off him. He actually pushes her away. Like, no. at that point, I'd be like, okay, there is something up. I'm totally looking at that body now. You're not stopping me. Yeah. Like, and then... The, the the subtle misdirection of, we got to fight. Uh, okay. <laughs> we get coffee. I need to talk to you now about it. I, it, it just, I don't know. <laughs> like, Dr. Worked, Tompkins is not stupid. <laughs> she worked in a psych hospital. She should see the red fucking flag. Yes, maybe, that's what bothers me. Maybe she does. It, and she's playing the long con. <laughs> maybe she realizes that if she Let's on that she notices the red flags. Nigma's gonna go crazy and gut her like a fish in the ME's office. Mm. I, dude, I don't know. I, I feel like she just was like, okay, coffee sounds good, and just left. And, but, like, the thing is, we know she's not that stupid. Yeah. We've seen her be better than this, and it was just, like, really ham-fisted is, like, the word that comes to mind. That they just, like, mm-hmm. suddenly, suddenly decided, like, well, that doesn't seem suspicious at all. Let's go get a coffee and discuss ladies. Ugh. Uh, <sighs> indeed. <sighs> you know? <laughs> yeah. That that did bother me. It but... was annoying. I mean, I'm not a fan of Lee, but... Seriously, lady. Y- this? No. You, not, no. Even if they made like a little scene where she went, she's like, there's something wrong in there to somebody else outside the medical exam. Just, you know, clear the air so something to make it seem like you're not completely ditzy. At least, like, make a mental note. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. Let us, let the audience know that you're thinking about this for more than 10 seconds. Please. Man. But I, I, all right, I will say that that the payoff for that was cool because, you know, we got to kind of see the two sides of him sort of unite, I think. I think. That scene was freaking amazing. Oh, it was so God. creepy. Thank you. Very I, well done. I've never been creeped out by this show before. That creeped me out. Like, there's yeah. been guts thrown all over the place, fires, eyeballs. whatever. Just yeah, stabbed yeah. all the time. Eyeballs, but all the eyeballs. Here's like this was ha- good. You know, happy, smiling Nigma, like, practically warping around, scared, terrified yeah, Nigma. I was, was like... Freaky. Jagged mm-hmm. movements. Like I've seen, up. you know, them, you know, do that the whole hey, this this character has a twin suddenly when really they're just never showing you their faces or they cut and paste them in and shit like that. Hell it was a whole fucking Lindsay Lohan movie like that. But not this was 
Woo! This was good. I liked it. It's incredibly well done. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that might be my favorite scene from the season. So far, yeah. Oh, I completely yeah. agree. Probably of all time so far. Like, honestly, that was just so, so well executed. And just, you know, you, you really, it really drove home. Like, you know, he's a very deeply disturbed man. And mm-hmm. I, I'm curious what, what he's going to be like. Like, can the two personalities that have now merged, can they keep up the act of the old Nygma? Or will he be, like, irrevocably different? He's intelligent enough to put on a good facade. Yeah, even even in the movies, wasn't the Riddler able to have two faces? Yeah. So to speak? I, yeah, I guess to a degree. Like, he has, he can be very calm and charming. Mm-hmm. But but that, that was my thing, was like, you know, this, this thinking about that we've seen is kind of a bumbling Sheldon, for, for <laughs> better or for worse. Yeah. And... Mm. You know, it, it. I feel like maybe he could justify it by being a little more suave and a little more intelligent. Um, by you know, just like you know, I, I had a girlfriend, and uh, you know, I've, I've become a man. So. <laughs> well, he kind of has. I'm pretty sure Kristen and was his first. <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah. Ain't nobody touched that in college. Mm-mm. <laughs> I don't think he even touched it in college, so let's just, just get that out of the way. Let's move on to Bruce Wayne and how much of an idiot he is. Shall, shall we, our other favorite moron on the show? Oh, good. I'm not alone. <sighs> he's 13. I don't even watch. No, and he's got a boner for the first time, and he doesn't know what girls mean. I don't even I, like. I don't even watch the show <sighs> regularly, like to keep up with podcasts and stuff like that. But come on. Like, <laughs> Like fuck, man, and and they're already talking in chat. Lee, Dom, and Chrissy are all talking about Silver and how evil she is, and how very clearly evil she is. Yeah, I mean, he didn't have to brainwash her. I mean, they they mentioned, I think, um, who said it? Uh, Silver was probably brainwashed by Theo. That's what Dom says. The Silver has been around Theo since she was little, like a little girl. She was adopted by him, so he didn't have to brainwash her. He just had to raise her. Yeah. Just tell her about the the family bloodline. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm loving Cleo screaming, Silver Silver is Barbara. My theory is sound. (laughs) Dude. Yeah, he just kind of shrunk Ray her a little bit. (laughs) But the analogy is apt. I mean, mean, she really is like a fucking screwball. She's Mm -hmm. so evil and creepy. She really is. But... Like Lee said in chat, like she was not evil at all in the comics. She was just like Batman's, you know, just a girlfriend that he had. Uh. And she was one of the few people who knew his secret identity. And that was just like, you know, they eventually just went their separate ways. It wasn't like a big to do. But this time, she's subverting Bruce. And I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to think of it because. I mean, Bruce really just fell like hook, line, and sinker. Like, I, I know he doesn't have a ton of reason to believe Selena. No. But, like, when has she let you down, like, that bad, that she, like, wasn't looking out for you? Like, I, I just wish she made it more clear how much she looked out for him. Because I think then but... he would have believed her. Well, yes, I agree. But you struck home before we even started talking about this about two minutes ago. Oh my god, he's got a. He's like, oh my god, I have a boner. I don't know what girls are. Yeah. <laughs> On f- that, he's blinded by the rush of male hormones that he's never yeah. experienced before. Like she kissed me, and like, dude, she's got boobs and everything. Like, wh- what like, do I she's do? She's well endowed. Oh my goodness. What yeah. do I do? Is Bruce and you know here's this other girl who's entirely a friend who hasn't kissed him. Um, and it's just like telling him all the shit, and he Bruce is just like, but boobs. But boobs. <laughs> she has them. I haven't seen yours. You wear jackets. Like, <laughs> I love how this Bruce, is the conversation. Come, come the fuck on. It you know it it was obviously frustrating for us, and, and that yeah. is frustrating for Selena. And that that oh god that lunch. The lunch. <laughs> the lunch. Well, the conversation before the lunch. Oh, like well, yeah. when 
Silver leans in and sniffs Selena, calls her like a garbage bag or whatever. It was yeah. just like, what are you doing? Come here, girl. Let me like, just no smell you. Mm. <laughs> garbage. Mm. Like, just evil, sinister, evil, evil. Oh, yeah. Then, oh, no. She's coming for lunch. She's your friend. Just to, like, really just, like, you know, fucking drive the stake in. Oh, yeah. Man, and then, of course, the quip at Alfred <laughs> was, <laughs> was wonderful. <laughs> I have to say, good job, Selena. She was. Something huh. about a slap in the face. Something about a huh. yes, like oh, a slap in the face, huh? <laughs> oh, this tea. The smell yeah. is like a slap in the face. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Mm. Alfred? <laughs> and, you know, I, like, the worst thing is, is, like, Bruce has been pretty observant, you know, especially lately. You know, he's been watching, he's been, like, able to kind of figure out Alfred a little better, you know... And and for some reason, you know, I guess because girl, he just doesn't seem to get things with Selena and Silver. And I, I just like, I don't, I, I want better for him. And I want him to learn that, you know, just because girl is nice to you does not mean that girl is a nice person. But yeah. for right now, I think we're going to have to put up with this for a little while. Yeah. Mm. And that sucks because <laughs> he's really pushing Selena away. Like, I, I was shocked that she came back. You know, I, I, I she, really was. She just lost Bridget. Yeah. And she doesn't want to lose Bruce. Even if he pushes her away, she's going to stick around. She's going to watch her yeah. from the shadows. Yep. Yeah. But this, this hurt, I think, a lot because she clearly came to talk. You know, she was like, wanted to talk about Bridget. And, you know, uh, on top of the fact that now Bruce just was like a complete, complete jerk to her. I, you know, I think, I don't think she's going to go away, obviously, but I don't think it's ever going to be the same between the two of them. No. You know, because, you know, she's going to have that I told you so when Silver inevitably shows her crazy. But, like... I, I just, it's not going to be the same. They're not going to ever be like the buddy cops jumping around rooftops and stuff like we saw in the first season. No. No. Buddy cops. So that, that's, that's a shame. <laughs> it is a shame. So, anyway. I guess we should probably talk about the cops of this show. <laughs> yeah, we probably should. Right. There's this guy. His name's Jim Gordon. Jim, Jim Gordon. Jim Gordon. Gordon. So... We we open with Jim at the GCPD at a re, at a meeting with the mayor, and we got another uh, another glimpse of Mister Dent um, not being overtly schizophrenic for fucking once. So that was good. <laughs> um, and uh, we start to see doubt crawl into G Jim Gordon's mind about yeah. our, our lovely Theo <clears throat> and uh, Captain penguin. Barnes, and well, yes, and Penguin, yeah. And then Captain Barnes is like, no, I'm the smartest, boldest captain in this office. You will listen to me. <laughs> that is a, that is, that was exactly his voice. Yeah. No, no, I, yeah. I am a trained voice actor. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> um, when did he get so dumb? When did that happen? I don't know. Martial law. It's, a, it's a good idea. It's within our rights. Like you were just bitching at Jim last episode for pushing his policeman rights and you're like okay with martial law and no yeah. those two things do not make sense to me <laughs> no martial law is really not that legal unless you're the <clears throat> national guard i'm sorry but that's not the way it works cops cannot call martial law no. as far as i know well either mayor can't either right mayor can oh, he can I, well it was theo's idea yeah but you don't you need government approval i think do you? If I'm not uh, mistaken, I, I don't. Let's see. Let's, uh, let, let's just let's, keep talking. I'll find let's, it. Let's let's wiki this shit. But, <laughs> um, but yeah. So, you know, Jim starts to explore other options as far as like Penguin's motive and Theo's yeah. motive, and um, takes them to Butch. Yep. Without his hammer, which is upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. His hand. 
Well, his living hand. love. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, as soon after they show up, obviously, you know, things cannot go well for him. So Zaz yeah. and his rowdy gang show up, and uh, yep. Butch's men ditch him, and they are locked in gunfire with Zaz. And um, fortunately, Butch told him everything about Theo except for the fact that you know he actually killed had his mother kill, uh, Penguin's yeah. mother killed um, and there was a cool gunfight I will say what did you guys think of that <laughs> there were some really big guns and I yeah. think Jim enjoyed that machine gun way too much <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Jim, <laughs> he, Jim is not like Bruce he knows what the girls are he wants the big guns that's what mm-hmm. makes him happy oh yeah oh yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> you can tell, you tell Harvey was having a good time. Oh yeah, Harvey Shit, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> a mayor can declare martial law in the United States. The broad definition of it, like in the U.S., is basically the suspension of habeas corpus. So, or uh, the suspension of judiciary overview of police forces. And it's it. only done in cases when, like, national safety. Or, like, the safety of people is concerned. Oh, so... Because Penguin's on the list. Like, for example, the mayor, yeah. of Ch- the mayor of Chicago declared it in the late 1800s due to the fire. The Great okay. Chicago Fire. He okay. declared martial law. So, you yeah. know, in cases like that. Okay, so maybe they were within their rights. Still a dick move. Still, Still a dick move. Still a dick move. I mean... Still, like, and, and having Harvey Dent, of all people, like, yeah, this is a great idea. Let's do it. Motherfucker, you're supposed to be like the White Knight of Gotham. <laughs> hey, no? maybe he's spiraling down the whole crazy path quicker than we wanted. It's a little soon. But... It's really soon. Has he? Even I know that. Has he flipped the coin yet? No. Good. Not yet. Thank God. He had a coin with him in the first episode we saw him. Oh shit! You're right, but it was doubles. It was double heads. Yeah. That's the so whole the thing. So the kids would always, the kids would always like end up in the, whatever favor, the favorable outcome was. But, but anyway, um, so they wind up getting some information from Bruce, and now Jim clearly knows that Theo is not the man who he says he is, and things start to line up for him. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he was able to actually make sense of what the hell the penguin's doing because now he knows the penguin was basically coerced into doing all this. So, yep. which escapes by detaching his handy dandy knot hand. <laughs> well, that, well, that's new. Yeah. And I'm done. So. I think Mike missed it, but Penguin cut off Butch's hand. Oh, that's right. Yes. I put that together. Okay. There was a hammer there. There was a hammer. It was like a mallet. Yeah. Like a gavel, I guess. I remember mm-hmm. seeing that, too. But anyway, um, they wind up the police having have the wonderful job of protecting Gallivan at his party, his inauguration yeah. party. Uh, we get a lovely quip from Harvey. So he's like, don't you care? Like, you know, Gorham's days, I'm like, don't you give a shit about any of this? And he's like, look, man. <laughs> oh, it's over here. Yes. Above my pay grade and below my sense of wonder. <laughs> so yeah. I could give less of a shit. I want to get a cat. <laughs> Which he did say. That was hilarious. That. I was like, yay. And Gordon's like, huh, what? Huh? Well, I don't even hear uh, you. Jim, I'm thinking of getting a cat. What? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Oh, my God. I love Bullock. He's great. Ah, uh, good man. So, obviously, uh, so so what did you guys think of the uh, the assault on the party? That was pretty cool, I thought. The, the whole it, Lee Silver in chat, March of the Penguins, that is better than anything I would have come up with. Oh, yeah, this. same. Yeah, describe it. Absolutely. But yeah, pretty much. Way to go finding that many henchmen who can look like you, walk like you, and act like you. <laughs> it was and really good. It was well executed. It was. I mean, this episode was all over the place. Lots of little scenes of all the different people, but the scenes that happened. Well done. Were great. Uh, yes, absolutely. It really made an impression. And, and I feel like this episode, more so than a lot of them, really pushed the story forward a lot in a lot of places. It did, yeah. You know, this was a very big episode. But, so anyway, the, the, the siege happens, and millions of <clears throat> penguin lookalikes are invading the party and shooting guns at people, people dying all over the place. And, um, you know, eventually they decide we have to escort Theo out of the building. Um, 
<clears throat> Mr. Gordon's uh, unfortunate subordinate was uh, killed going after the tigress with mm -hmm. a heel to the throat uh, in the meantime, which was the worst way to die, I think, in that situation. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> like, man, they are just dropping like flies. They really tassels. are. They are not going to make it out of this season. The whole GCPD is just dying left, right, just center. Annihilated. Wasn't Crazy. was it the first episode or the second episode of the season? Because I did watch the beginning of this season where like they walked in and killed everybody in the police department. Yeah, Jerome. I think was that episode three? That was, How? Yeah, two or yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. How do you have that many more cops now? <laughs> I don't uh, well, know. I mean, like where Cleo explained it when it first happened. There was people off duty. There was people out on patrol. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, I mean, not everybody was at work that day. And they said only eight or so got, like, injured and two got killed or something like that. Oh. So, I mean, there's still a lot of them walking around. I guess. I mean, whatever. These guys are just more <laughs> stormtroopers. <laughs> I have to say, they're just like the cannon fodderiest of cannon fodder. Yeah. But yeah. we get, you know, so eventually we get outside um, and Gordon is now between the Penguin and Theo and they're having quite the exchange. They're like, shut up, do it. And Penguin's is like telling him, like, you know what he did to me? And Gordon, Jim's like, yeah, yeah, I know. I know exactly what he did. And there's a look at Theo's face I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, he's I like, oh, the, no. That was like the first time I think we've seen that look on his face of, oh, God. Like, I'm oh, in trouble. Like, oh shit. He might let Penguin shoot me. <laughs> I would have, but hey, you know. Yeah, I would have as well, but Gordon has his morals, even though he's still dipping his toe into the ugly side of the pool, so. Mm. He is. And, you know, I, I did appreciate that he, like, was going to give Penguin, like, he was not going to shoot him. There was no. no chance in hell that he was going to shoot the Penguin. Uh, well, Tigers did. Spoiler alert. So. Yeah. Uh, he ain't gonna be getting shot anyway. Somehow, but like, toughed it off, managed to get into the car, take off, which was, I mean, well played. It really was. He uh, escapes. It, he's way more resilient than people want him to be. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. He just will not die. I mean, he has yeah. plot armor, like I said last time, plot so armor. he's yeah. not going anywhere. You know, but I kind of like that they're, you know, bringing him close to death and bringing him to the brink of sanity. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I enjoy that about him. But, um, but anyway, so then Gordon finally has his actual, like, you know, James Bond villain face off with Theo. Yeah. You know, it basically tells him like, I'm going to take you down. You're going to lick my boots. Bond, James Bond. I don't know. However the line goes, but <laughs> So now we have, uh, I think we have a bit of a new plot line to pursue, Obviously. which is nice. So th this episode moved so much forward, but opened up quite a few doors, I would say. And uh, I'm excited to see what happens next. So totally. I mean, anyway, I want more. I was going to say, go ahead. I want um, more warping well, dark enigma. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. we did get a little bit more enigma before the show ended. Like when he warped in, right? He yes. came, became one. You know. Oh, that's right. That's right. He. That's when he pulled out. Like he just kind of went straight faced. He kind of grinned a little bit. He pulled out the saw and he was like, "He's getting down to business." And again with the freaking old like the, the songs that just resonate with you. They're just they're perfect for that exact part. Like we had perfect day. Um, what was it? Was it first episode? Of the yes. season? Yeah. The Send the Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yep. Uh, it was Louis Prima? Oh, right. The song. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, I think, huh. what, oh yeah, Closer to the Bone. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh. Slicey, slicey. Slicey, so, slicey. Yeah. I, I well, I I did. I guess we also forgot to mention what he said at the end, where yeah. he was like, "You liked it, didn't you? Like you did." And he was like, "It was beautiful. It was beautiful. That feeling of 
fear and dread and terror. I, th I don't think he's ever felt so alive. And I think that's why he thought it was so beautiful. Mm. And I think now he realizes, like, I can feel this way as much as I want. Hmm. Hmm. So they have, they built Penguin up <clears throat> and they tore him down and now he's running away. And mm. now they're throwing the Riddler at us. Like, we know he's the Riddler now. Like, there's no doubt about this it. This is it. I mean, he's him. Which he's makes him. sense, because in, like, most Batman stories, he was Riddling far before Bruce Wayne was Batman. So yeah. uh -huh. this, this actually is, it makes sense mm. time-wise. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering now, like, is he actually going to just be killing people? or, or and, and doing this for sport and setting up these riddles now? Like, is he going to go out of his way to do this? You know, what's, what's na I don't know what his next move is. So that, that I'm excited to see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lee, says, Lee says in chat we need uh, before the Riddler comes into play we need to see uh, Clayface and the Mad Hatter jeez oh, see I guess Clayface would have to be like in that Wayne Enterprises bunker that we saw Firefly being taken into mm -hmm. imagining they'd have to come from there and uh, Clayface are they going to pull like you know the actual Clayface, where he can morph into all kinds of crazy shit, or is Clayface just going to be some mobster with a fucked up face? I don't know. They no haven't. Idea. This show hasn't delved into the supernatural, really. It really hasn't. Like, like scientific advancements, yeah. Like with the the that sort of pseudo venom from the venom, one. and then the gas. And Dom says right. we need to see Freeze show up. Mm-hmm. I think but, eventually. I mean, if we're sticking timeline-wise, Mr. Freeze doesn't become Mr. Freeze until Batman is a thing. Yeah. Yeah, because Bruce basically comes... Because he was... In one of the stories I've read, he's basically... he was work, Victor Freeze was working at Wayne Enterprises. Um, right. And doing kind of forbidden research to keep his wife alive. alive. That um, and, you know, we're not going to see Two-Face either because, you know... Joker has to show up first. Right. To make Harvey Two-Faced. Hmm. Uh. And yeah, so th even if that's the way they're going to go with this series, it's done it a few ways. True, true. We don't know. We have no idea. But now we, I mean, we did find out that anyone could be the Joker, and mm -hmm. you know, so so they're they're setting up a lot this season, and I kind of like like what they're doing. They're letting things breathe more like than they did last season, especially now. Mm -hmm. You know, these plot lines were running for seven episodes so far, and they just opened up more. You know, some closed, but a lot more doors opened. I think so. I'm kind of glad they're they're letting everyone get its, get their due time. They're not rushing. They're kind of just letting things happen and letting some people get stupider. So, <laughs> well, I mean, soon as they showed us uh, Indian Hills, I so mean, it, that's that all the doors. There was tons open there, so we can only expect a lot of things coming out from this show. It's not. Yeah. It's not ending this season. It's gonna no, go God, on. No. It's God, going no. on. And you know it's what? Life Honest, it now. Honestly, they even said like the Indian Hill thing. Those are like those characters that we saw were just mm -hmm. there to illustrate what it was. Like those mm -hmm. aren't even who we're gonna see no. coming out of that if we do this season at all. So like, this is not even the tip of the iceberg. It's just like this horrible thing brewing in the background. Oh yeah. It's like a night at Denny's. A night at Denny's. I like it. Oh, but some Denny's anyway. are good. <laughs> John, would you? Some of them are good. Some would you like a not. night at Denny's? I found a Denny's that's nearby. Oh. I apologize good. for the distraction, but my cat's doing something ridiculous. I, I, I mean, I hate my body, so let's go to Denny's. It's in a, anyway. it's in a really, really dinky town in New Jersey, just outside of Rahway. So over the bridge. Worth, it's totally worth the trip. Probably isn't. <laughs> Uh, is there anything else you guys would like to talk about before mm -hmm. we wrap things up? I don't know. I mean, Gordon is still as awkward with Leah as we've discussed before. She gave him a key to her apartment. That's and, right. That's right. And he said, do you want a key to mine? She's like, oh, hells no. no. Do you even have a place to go to? And he's like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Which was cute. I mean, they have those like little quirky lines from everybody this, this episode, which just I mean, with all the juice, they had to give us some sweetness, some sugar. <laughs> I, I, yes, you're right. I did appreciate that a lot, mm -hmm. actually. That was very sweet of them. 
<laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I, I kind of like that their relationship, even amid all this chaos, is still fine and normal, and they're doing okay. So, yeah, you know, that's kind of nice. Mike, do you have anything you wanted to add, or? No, I'm good. All right. <laughs> So, next week, oh, it's going to be a doozy, kids, if anyone saw the preview. It's called Tonight's the Night, and Gallivan sends Barbara after Jim Gordon. <laughs> well, <laughs> holy shit, that, that line alone. That sounds <laughs> Well, he fun. tries to make a big business deal with Bruce Wayne. Barnes and Bullock are hot on Barbara's trail, and Nygma has a run-in with a familiar face. So, this tells us some things. That one thing is that... Jim and Harvey aren't working together on this one because Jim's in a big old pile of dookie. Mm. We saw we saw images of Barbara in a wedding dress, having him strapped to a chair in a church. Them maybe kissing in the interrogation room. Dude, there's some fucked up shit going on next episode. <laughs> blah, blah. Wow. Letting, you know what? I never saw out. the preview this time. So, like, I kind of made it because I read the synopsis. Because I, I definitely, like... I watched the show, I did what I had to do, I read the synopsis for next episode, and I was like, should I watch the preview? Should I watch the promo? No, I'm not gonna. And just <sighs> hearing that, I'm like, oh my god. Oh, it's gonna be ugly. I mean, they're letting Barbara off the leash. I don't know what's gonna happen. Like Now it's making me question the strength of Leslie and Jim's relationship, and what... I, dude, I think it's gonna be nuts, so stay tuned for that. We'll be... Right here next week, same time. So same time, same place. Stay tuned. Same place. Blah, same blah. Fucking everything. Anyway, <sighs> that is our show for tonight. Uh, Miss Nikki, where can the people find you? They can find me on Twitter at Lady Venom Twenty Four, L A D Y V E N O M Twenty Four. And this fellow down here, where can they find you besides below me? You can find me on Twitter at Philodrin, right there, and below him. And no, Dom, Barbara and Jim do not finally get married. <laughs> no, shut up, Dom. All right, anyway, you can find me at No More No More on the Twiddles. And you can find all of us on the ASOTV podcast here uh, on YouTube, Google Plus, Facebook, fucking MySpace. Twitter. What else do we have? Gmail Twitter. and Twitter. Gmail and Twitter. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Google um, Plus, Gmail, same thing. Mm-hmm. Come in, just we do every fucking show under the sun. Pretty much. Close. Pretty much. Very close. <laughs> Come hang out. It'll be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I probably won't be hosting ever again. So (laughs) You did good. (laughs) You did fine. You you guys, I appreciate that. But anyway, stay tuned next week. We have a wedding to plan. Was an episode... Hey, they should have did it this episode. Weddings are always on episode seven. (laughs) Is that a rule? Yes. I didn't know that. (laughs) Me neither. Shit. All right. They fucked up. They did. Well... Season 7, episode 7, it depends on the series.